안녕하십니까? 김경원입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Kyung-won. To do sinus bone graft, you can use a crystal approach or lateral approach. Today, I'm going to talk about doing lateral approach using last kit for grafting the sinus. I'm going to provide a brief introduction of last kit and then I'm going to talk about clinical cases using last kit followed by summary. This is the introduction of last kit. When you use last kit in the past, you would use low speed handpiece brown burr or you use burr along with high-speed handpiece. In this case, when you form lateral window, if you're a beginner, at times you come across the sinus membrane perforation and there are different risks. And depending on the surgical skill of the surgeon, there can be complications, including sinus membrane perforation. When you use last kit, you can use last drill. This is an extension of cast drill. You'll be able to form lateral window easily. And stopper can be connected. Therefore, you can do lateral approach without other complications, including sinus membrane perforation. As mentioned, the last kit is an abbreviation of lateral approach sinus kit. This last kit can be used to do sinus lift more easily without sinus membrane perforation or other damages. Let's look at the traits of last kit. The last drill has inverted cone shape and round edge design. This can be considered as extension of cast drill. Therefore, you'll be able to do lateral approach and form lateral window without sinus membrane perforation. Sinus kit is included in last kit. You can use last kit for different anatomical forms within sinus cavity and therefore you'd be able to easily and widely lift the sinus membrane. There's a tool for doing bone graft within last kit. You'd be able to do bone graft within sinus cavity without contamination. This is the kit design for that. Let's look at components of last kit. There's a tool to form lateral window and another tool to lift the sinus membrane and a tool to do bone graft. First is dome drill. In forming lateral window, the lateral wall is grinded off and dome drill is used for that. The recommended RPM is approximately 1200 to 1500 RPM. You grind off the lateral window and form the lateral window. The design of the blade is the same as the cutting edge design in cast drill. You'll be able to form lateral window without damaging the sinus membrane and you can gather the bone chip and use it for bone graft as well. You can tilt the drill itself if the surgical site in question is short in space. These are the characteristics of dome drill. The next is wide dome drill. If the window size formed with dome drill is small, you, you can widen it with wide dome drill. You can use this to expand horizontally to get the desired window size. 
Next is sidewall drill. When you use dome drill or wide dome drill to form a window, the bone can be very thin and there can be a sharp edge. You can use this to trim the sharp edge using the sidewall drill. The stopper used in casket can be used for sidewall drill to adjust the length of the drill. The sidewall drill, there's a 3mm for the stopper and below that there's 6mm. You can use the stopper in casket for this and for instance if you connect an 8mm stopper the lateral cutting blade length becomes 1 mm. If you connect a 9 mm stopper, it becomes 2 mm, and 10 mm stopper becomes 3 mm. The lateral wall thickness is approximately 12 mm, and if you use the stopper from CAS kit, you'd be able to choose the appropriate sidewall drill length and proceed with the procedure in a safe manner. The tip is round. Next is core drill. I use core drill more frequently. In the case of dome drill, the lateral window is grinded off. As for a core drill, you form the lateral window and take out the window and then reposition the bone lid. You can use this as a autogenous bone graft. The diameter of core drill are 5.5 and 7.0 and the recommended RPM is 1200 to 1500 RPM. The basic form of core drill it has the same design concept as the cutting blade of cast drill. It is designed to minimize damage to sinus membrane. It has a round cutting blade. The bone chip can be gathered in the blade and you can gather the autogenous bone. Stopper can be connected here. As mentioned, stopper can be mounted on dome drill and core drill, easily put. This is used to control the drilling depths of last drill. The stopper, there are six different variations of stopper starting from 0 0.5 to 3 millimeter. It gradually increases to 3 millimeter. The general sinus lateral wall thickness is approximately 12 millimeter and it, this is designed to form a lateral wall window in an easy manner. Next is bone separator. When you use core drill, at times the bone lid gets stuck inside the core drill. This bone separator can be used to easily remove it. Next, I'm going to talk about sinus curette for bone graft. You can use short and long sinus curette. This is a tool to elevate membrane. So first you use the short one and then you use the long one to go deep into the mesial side. The tip is curved three ways so you can get easy access towards different directions inside sinus cavity. Sinus curette serves to such purposes. Next, I'm going to talk about membrane separator. This tool is used so that you can easily detach your sinus membrane in the initial stage. On the other side, there is a plugger where you can fill the bone graft material into the sinus cavity via a crystal drill hole. Next is freer elevator. I personally use this very frequently. When you form a lateral window using core drill, you can use this to separate the window. 
You can also do sinus membrane elevation in a more safer manner. When you do bone graft, because the patient is lying down, the bone graft can flow to the posterior area, so you can prevent that from happening. On one side, it's curved. The width of rear elevator is approximately 5 mm. This is a tool that I use most frequently. Next is bone graft carrier. On one side, is shaped like a spatula so that you can carry bone graft material. You can block contamination due to saliva and soft tissue. You can move bone graft very easily. Because of this purpose, it has been designed in spatula shape. On the other side, it's shaped like a blade. Before, I've mentioned that the width of rear elevator is 5 mm. In this case, this is 3 mm. It has a narrower tip. If rear elevator is too big, you can use this because it is narrower to lift the sinus membrane. I'm going to show you the last technique in a simple manner. When you use dome drill technique, sinus lateral wall window is grinded off. When you use core drill, you get the window form and then reposition it. That's the technique using core drill. I've introduced the last kit in a brief manner. I'm going to talk about clinical cases using last kit. This is 33-year-old male patient. In a private dental clinic, extraction was done. In the extraction socket area, bone fill did not occur nicely. The area where implant was to be placed was perforated and the residual alveolar bone thickness was less than 1 mm. Patient was referred to me for sinus graft. If possible, the original dental clinic wanted to do the implant. The dentist just wanted me to do the bone graft. When you look at CT, in the extraction socket, there's barely any bone left on the crystal side of alveolar bone. This is a difficult case to do implant placement and sinus graft at the same time. The clinical image shows that number 6 is missing. Mucoperiosteal flap needs to be reflected. You need to expose the lateral side of the sinus. I use the core drill within the last kit. I use diameter 7 mm, stopper is connected and window is formed. As shown, stopper is mounted and lateral window is formed. Once window is formed, you can use a freer elevator to separate the window. The bony lid is removed. As you can see, the crestal side of alveolar bone, there's very little residual bone. You can see patency in the socket area. There's adhesion with sinus membrane, and a slight perforation of sinus membrane has occurred. I lifted the residual lateral sinus membrane. Actually, the size of the lateral window, which we use to remove using core drill, the size of it is the same as the bone defect on the crystal side of alveolar bone. I grafted using this lid in the socket area. Within the sinus cavity, I used yellow allogenic bone, human bone, and xenograft, AOS. I layered it. In the area where it is in contact with the host bone, I used allogenic bone and I covered with the xenograft and did sinus graft like this. Bone graft was performed as mentioned earlier. There was slight perforation of sinus membrane. In this case, 
I used a fibrin glue because the perforation was quite severe. This was how the sinus membrane was repaired. A suture was done. Regarding usage of fibrin glue to repair sinus membrane perforation, I'm going to provide a lecture on this next time. This is at initial visit, and this is immediate post-op image. Last kit was used to form lateral window. The window lid was used to graft the bone defect area in the socket, and sinus graft was done. Unfortunately, after I did surgery, follow-up was not done properly. The implant was placed by a private dental clinic, and based on my understanding, the patient is using it without any problem. This is the second case. In this case, the patient first came to me in June 2017. In the posterior area, there are a lot of missing teeth. The right side of the sinus, I used a low-speed handpiece and round burr to do sinus graft in a conventional manner. Four months later, secondary surgery was done. I'm going to talk about the left sinus. On the left side, I used the last kit for sinus graft. Incision was made on the lateral side. I exposed the lateral wall of sinus in number 24. Implant was placed beforehand. Quadril of last kit was used to form window. Lateral window was formed. Membrane separator of last kit was used to detach and elevate the membrane. Membrane was elevated, drill hole was formed, bone graft was done. In this case, sinus membrane was not perforated, it was well lifted. Three implants in total were placed and the window was repositioned. Number 24. The alveolar bone was quite thin, so in this case, I used fibrin glue. On the inside, on the outer side, I did not use a membrane, but used a fibrin glue to fixate the graft material. Suture was done. As shown, on the left side, three implants were placed. This is immediate post-op image. Implants were placed in the lower as well. The fourth panoramic image is one year and 10 months later surgery using last kit. Progressive loading was done because of multiple reason. In the case of last image, this is five years and five months after doing sinus graft using last kit. You can see that it is well maintained. I'd like to summarize today's lecture. Last kit is an abbreviation for lateral approach sinus kit, which can be used to do sinus bone augmentation via lateral approach in a safe manner. Last drill has the same design concept as cast drill. It is designed so that you can easily and safely form lateral window. When you use stone drill, you can grind off lateral window itself. When you use core drill, you can form lateral window and separate the bone lid. Sinus kit is also included after you form lateral window. You'll be able to lift the sinus membrane in a safe manner and you can do it widely. There are many useful tools for that. Another tool I've introduced is bone graft carrier. You can use this to move the bone graft material into the maxillary sinus cavity. You can prevent or minimize 
contamination due to salivo or soft tissue, and you'd be able to do sinus surgery without secondary infection. These tools are included in last kit. There are two ways to augment sinus floor. There is crestal approach and lateral approach. In the case of lateral approach, many people find conventional technique in forming lateral window very difficult. They worry about many complications, including sinus membrane perforation. If you use last kit, you'll be able to form sinus lateral window in a more easy manner. There are many tools for sinus membrane elevation. Sinus kit can be used to, to safely lift a sinus membrane and do sinus graft in a successful way. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you for watching.